Hey up, and welcome back to Matt's Mindful Meals. Slightly different tonight, because I'm only cooking water. Uh, but the way I'm going to cook water is probably going to be the main thing about this video. Um, so what I'm going to be using, I'm going to be using alcohol stoves. But the main thing about it for this week is the kind of actual stand stroke stove that I'm going to be using. Because I've got four or five different kinds. So I'm going to be testing and seeing which ones are probably the most robust and most versatile. So I've got a couple of fireboxes. I've got one by a company called Tokes, which is their pot stand. But I've also got the elusive Trangia Triangle, which is now back on the market because during covid it seemed as though that factory shut down and you couldn't get them anywhere and they went to like ridiculous price but anyway i'm going to use them tonight to like heat this water up but show you a few of the pros and cons in my belief niger's just turned up so we're going to walk down to where we're camping which is going to be like the salt marshes and i'm going to be using a nightcat ultralight hiking tent that you've seen me use before um because i'm trying to get myself ready to doing a big three day, hence one of the reasons why I'm using this dehydrated food. Anyway, enough of the gassing. We need to get down there before this rain comes and get these tents set up. So I'll chat to you soon. This horrific giant hogweed. It's just awful stuff. You just need to really just keep away from it. A big tip is if you coming near a, a tidal river like what this is make sure that you don't put your tent on this side of the tide line because last thing you want to do is be taking your tent down at two o'clock in the morning when the river's swelled up so we need to go that side of the tide line simple is it but people still make that mistake Well, a couple of nightmares putting the tent up. I haven't put that one up for quite a while. Um, so I pulled it over once or twice. But this ground here, so full of stones, you, you think you've got the right place, but then you just can't get a peg in. Anyway, enough of that mither. So, <laughs> got my new t-shirt on that Heather got me for me, for my birthday. So I've got Matt's Mindful Meals t-shirt. Oh yeah. Anyway, as I said, alcohol stoves, because I'm going to try doing dehydrated food, which we'll, we'll see a little bit later. So the two main alcohol stoves that I've got, I've got two or three Trangia burners, the standard ones, but I bought this one when I got my Firebox freestyles because one of the ways that you set the freestyle up, you set it up as a, like a fire candle and it's too narrow then to fit in the Trangia one. So I bought the Toke Siphon. So if we compare the two, the benefits of the Tote Siphon over the Trangia is it's quite a lot smaller 
and it's a lot lighter because it's made of titanium. And then the advantages of the Trangia, everybody's favorite. Um, you can more or less run over this with a truck and it would still work. You've got a damper on it, so you can change how hot it is by changing the hole there. But another benefit with this one is you can actually store fuel in it if you're stuck for space. So this one is already full of bioethanol, whereas the downside, or the cons if you like, with the toke siphon is it's open topped so you can't store anything in it and also when it comes to a trangia if you want to turn it off or snuff it out you can close that over and when it's burning drop it over the top and it's out whereas this one i've had a few times where i've tried to blow it out now i know my lung capacity hasn't been brilliant recently but it's a lot better now and i still struggle to blow that out or potentially blow some of the hot burning fuel out and then set somewhere else on fire so not great it's a good little stove but you have to be a lot more careful with it so my personal favorite good old Trangia there are loads of different companies who basically do knockoff versions of these you can get them as cheap as five pounds seven or eight dollars right up to titanium versions of these which would be like 30 or 40 pounds or like 40 dollars Anyway, these are useless on their own. So what I'm gonna go through now is to try and figure out which is my favorite alcohol stove and why, and what's the versatility of it. So I'll move this out of the way for a minute. Everybody more or less in the UK, at least, if you've done some scouting or something, start off with a, a full Trangia. But as you know, they're quite a bit bulky. So a smaller alcohol stove is obviously a, a, a godsend. So this one is the Firebox Nano. Now this is the titanium version and it comes in what they call an X case. Now, one of the things I like about this is obviously it's nice and compact, comes in a case. You get the stove itself, which I'll show you in a minute. But you also get a piece of carbon felt so you can use that to move things that are really hot, if you're careful. But you've also got some pins. You get two of these and you can thread them through and then you can make a little wind protector if you're using this. I've not had to use, had to use it as a wind protector because I tend to put myself in a nice bit of sheltered area. Um, but one of the considerations I think is very important is if you're out hiking in the winter and you've got wet, cold hands, how easy is it to get this from being in its box to working. So the way this works is it's like the normal fireboxes that you get from firebox stove, um, but you just literally open it. And if you wanted to, you could use it like that straight away. It's ready to go more or less few little tweaks to make it perfect but that's how quick it took 10-15 seconds quite simply you just open the box up fold down the flap and that can fit straight in there and you can use it in that format if you wish okay but you can make it so it works a little bit more efficiently by putting the fire sticks in so these fire sticks come in really handy because this also works with the gas adapter for the Trangia. So if you're not using mess and you've got your gas bottle, it works really, really well with the gas adapter. Okay. So all we do on this one is move the pot stand out of the way, drop in your Trangia, light your Trangia, and pop your pot on. Really simple. The advantages of this one for me is you can use it with the gas adapter, you can use it with the normal alcohol burner, 
can turn these out so it hold a big pot turn them in like I had it earlier on so it'll hold a small cup so I've used my 10 inch frying pans on this and cooked a whole curry just using the, the mess so that's another good one but it also because of the way it's been made and you've got the feeding holes at the front you can actually use it as a twig stove as well so that's a third kind of fuel source you can also use it with like esbit tablets you know the solid fuel tablets so yeah that's a really versatile system to use fold it away is nice and simple and you're more or less ready to go so that is the firebox nano I've had this now for over two years love it to bits that's the firebox nano then the next one up in the firebox range now, I'm not talking about their big fireboxes which are the five inch but this is what's called the firebox freestyle so it's a little bit bigger than the, the three inch nano it comes with a similar bag and a similar kind of X case that you can use as a stand So you get quite a bit more with this. It's a little bit heavier weight, but as the other one, you can use it as a wood stove. So you can use quite a lot larger kindling size, four inch to four to five inch long pieces of wood to use. Now, but you get grilling grates, so you can actually cook full steaks on this or sausages if you're using it as a wood stove or if you're using it as an alcohol. Now remember what I said to you with the smaller one if you've got cold wet hands and you need to get something going quite quickly so simple form like that so you can use that straight away as a normal firebox but if you put the fire sticks in to the side holes on either side you can then simply slip in your trangia burner but the thing, because these have got different heights you can change the height of your alcohol burner so whether it's going to be really hot or just keeping things simmering but then also you can also use this to change the way that the heat comes that much flames coming out of your transi burner so this one also uses the adapter if you want to use a gas burner if you're taking that with you so that's quite cool but quite lucky I've got a second one but this is why I then went on to buy the Tokes siphon because now you can see it's made into a triangle this is really good Again, if you want to use wood sticks to make like a Swedish torch. But this is why I bought the Tokes siphon. Because the Trangia, as you can see here, doesn't fit inside there. But I waited a long time for this to get hold of the Tokes one, which fits in perfectly. So then to fill that, tend to fill it up when it's in position because it's a little bit fiddly and it's an open cup so to fill it up and then slide it in is sometimes a little tiny bit tricky uh, but yeah so that's the firebox freestyle so I like that too put that to one side until I start to heat some water up So alphabetical order, no particular preference. This is the Tokes alcohol stove stand. Very, very compact. So the, the benefits of this one is it hardly weighs a thing. And the cup that I use in my brew kit, which is in another video, which I'll probably link into this one, 
this a toke siphon a little bottle that's enough to fill it up a few times and a spoon and everything all fits inside my little brew kit so i do like that now remember how i said about the other ones how they go together really easily now if you've been in any area where you're really really cold and wet you know that you lose the dexterity a little bit in your hands so this one goes together quite easily but not as easily as the others so it's a little bit harder to put together so here we go so i'm doing this with relatively warm hands nice and dry and i've done it quite a few times it's no race but and there we go so with the tokes siphon pop that into there and on a flat surface that's the perfect height to get to the sweet spot where the right heat is so yeah that's a good system but what i have had with this in the past is with a heavy pan sometimes it can come undone it's happened to me once or twice so it's not doesn't happen all the time but there is a consideration because it's not joined together with any official hinges well mechanical hinges it's just with the little plates i have had it come apart on me on one or two occasions maybe it was my fault but what i have done since that is i've added a little bit more of a bend radius into it which seems to have got rid of it so maybe it won't ever happen again but that's the tokes alcohol stand so i'll put that to one side so this one during covid i think the factory closed down for a little while and they went from being as i paid for this one this week a little over 20 pounds with the postage they were going for about 70 quid on ebay and they were being imported in from america as well unbelievable so this is probably the most difficult to put together of all three because it's in a couple of phases hang on a second so remember with icy cold hands would you have the dexterity to do this? Not 100% sure. But again, it's the, this. I've never actually lit this before. So I may be being a little bit unfair. But let me know. But as I say, I can only tell you, and I'm only, I can only say with any guarantee, my own experiences. So that's together now. And then you need to put this little circle device in. Now I've looked on the instructions for this and it's better to put it in and then twist it once it's in, in the centre. So I'm not making this up on purpose and uh, maybe somebody can tell me how to do it easier than this. But from the instructions you get it into the centre and try to rotate it. So that's one in, second one in third one in and then this uses the standard trangia and it fits perfectly into that circle ring well you'd like to think so because it is made by the company who designed the trangia and this one also uses the alcohol I'm not sorry not the alcohol the gas version so that's great so the titanium tokes one and this one are solely for used with the alcohol burners so when it comes to versatility the firebox ones work better for me obviously this one is the complete definitely the lightest uh, I'm gonna get this one lit in a second I'm gonna see if it fits my 750 mil pot 
not quite so I'm not going to use that one I'm no, as I say I've never used it before um, if you use it with the transier pans or something maybe the one litre version of this you probably be okay but for tonight and this trip it's not going to be any good for me because that's the biggest pot that I bought and nine times out of ten if I'm just doing a little backpacking with an alcohol stove that is the biggest one I buy I, I bring with me so tonight I think I'm going to heat my water up for my dehydrated meal in my Tokes alcohol stove. But anyway, I'll get this lit. Handy little tip I've picked up from somebody and I can't remember where who from, but it was a long, long time ago. dip a big piece of grass or a twig into your alcohol trust it not work the time I'm trying to show somebody now that's lit straight away so time to get me water on So yeah, so that's the, the Tokes alcohol stand with the siphon in there. Anyway, let's talk about this week. So this week, really good week. I, um, for the past few weeks now, I haven't made a video, but my energy levels are, are, are going through the roof compared to what they used to be. I'm able to do more exercising. I'm now finally able to commute to work on my bike a couple of days a week. Now the whole journey there and back it's just under 40 miles so this week I've done it a couple of times did it a couple of times last week as well so I went to see the aviation doctor today and he said that hopefully if things keep going this way he'll be able to put me up for a, some medical tests and hopefully be able to get back flying or at least be allowed to start training to go back flying again within the next few weeks anyway I'll bring you back in a little while when this is heated up and uh, I'll show you some of this de dehydrated food. So the water's almost coming to the boil, but I'm going to explain my rationale behind this. Is As I said, I'm hoping to do a multi-day walk with some of my friends, but at the moment the only person who can definitely say he's going to be coming is Dave. So we're going to be trying to go as light as possible. So I'll probably be taking this tent, if not a bivvy. Um, so I'm going to try out dehydrated meals. Now I have tried dehydrating my own food. And uh, Nigel, who's with me, his wife's got a, a desiccator. So that basically dehydrates your food. So I did a chili con carne and some rice. And it worked really good. Um, but I did lose the video, so I couldn't actually put it out. But I can do that again. Because if this it doesn't taste as good as that stuff... I might as well make my own um, but tonight I'm gonna to try these for a couple of reasons really because if you've if you're going away in the woods or the hills for three days and you've never tried this before you go you never know whether it's going to agree with you or not now I'm always careful with things like that so that's why I'm gonna try it before I go just to make sure it agrees with me and whether I like it or not so I've got two choices that have been sent so I've got pulled pork with rice and I've got posh pork and beans. Now, that sounds more like a breakfast thing for me. I might be wrong, but I've never tried it before. So the posh pork and beans, I'm gonna to have tomorrow morning. So tonight, I'm gonna to go for pulled pork with rice. Now, we'll see how it goes. So I don't know how much water I need to put in. So I'll have a look on here for the instructions. All you need is 3.8 DL of hot water. 3.8 DL. I don't know what that is. So let's see if there's a fill line. Yep, there's a fill line here. So when I open it up, I'll be able to fill it to this fill line. Important thing on these bags, you've got the top tear off when you fill it up with water. Then when you leave it for the period that you need to leave it for, and this one is eight minutes. So you seal it up once you've stirred it through with the water in, leave it for eight minutes. 
and when you come to eat it you tear it off at the next one and then you can get at it but however big tip for anybody who's eating anything out of a bag these long handled spoons are a godsend anyway so the water i think is just coming up to a boil so let's give it a shot pulled pork with rice now we're a little bit behind schedule tonight because we tried to go up to the big lock but there wasn't many suitable places we could get to so you can smell a little bit of flavor but i think it's going to be quite spicy which if you've been with my tv my some tv my youtube channel before you'll know i love the spicy food so make sure it's definitely boiling yep that's boiling now I don't know how much I'm gonna left have left over to see where there's enough for a coffee or if there isn't I boil some up in a bit still haven't told you which is my favorite alcohol stand come stove right let's get this poured in Tiny bit more. Okay, that's just right. And there is enough for a coffee, so that's great. So, give it a little bit of a stir around so you don't get lots of powdery bits. Oh, I think I might like this. Anyway, let's seal it up. Leave that for eight minutes. Have a cup of coffee and I'll see you in a little while. Right then, moment of truth. It's now been eight minutes. These are nice for warming your hands up, to be honest. So there was enough water left to make a brew. So that's 750 mil pot. I filled this up to the, the line here and there was still enough to make a good brew. So I'm happy with that. But earlier on in this video, I did say that the Tokes pot stand has come apart on me a couple of times. Now that might be a little bit unfair because as I say, I bent it a little bit more and it's solid as a rock tonight. So maybe I was a little bit harsh on it earlier on but yeah on my own experience it did come apart a couple of times but i'll reiterate now it does seem solid as a rock anyway get on to the tasting of this so pulled pork with rice now if you ask my missus if the kids and her love pulled pork i can't stand the stuff because i don't like the texture of it however the little taste out of this the taste was fantastic so as i said you now tear off the next one and the last thing you want to happen here is it to tear through the bag so that's something i'm i'm a bit wary of but no it tears across in a perfectly straight line and went actually went through the other tab so yeah 10 out of 10 for the design of the bag and the material it's made out of so we're losing light here quite quickly and I've not got a Fandango lighting system so you'll have to take it from me on this one it looks very much like a chili con carne um, you won't be able to tell here but yeah instead of it being like mince you can see it's like stringy pieces of pork um, as I say ordinarily I don't like pulled pork or any of the pulled kinds of meat or shredded meat I don't like that I like something to bite down on. Um, however, let's give it the taste test.
genuinely really really good so yeah i definitely recommend them definitely so yeah i'm gonna have a look at a few more flavors on the internet and, and maybe get some of these to take away with me because they actually taste better than the stuff i dehydrated myself anyway as you can see it's getting quite dark here so i'm gonna eat this have a good old chat to Nigel's over there and i'll see you in the morning to tell you what the breakfast's like. Draw. morning again well after a lot of thought over what I said last night about all the different burners etc controversial this is going to be but I think my favorite and the one that I'll probably use as be my go-to one if I'm going to go away on a two or three days and I'm not going to take gas it's definitely going to be the firebox nano um, it's quite versatile as I said you can use it with wood but the thing for me is it's just so quick and easy to set up because take it out of its box, we're set up. If I, I could use it that way if I wanted to, uh, but I am going to put the fire sticks in because it's a little bit quicker to boil the water if you get it that about quarter of an inch higher. So we'll set this up. I can easily do this with wet, cold hands because I've got wet, cold hands this morning because the rainstorm's just come through and that's more or less gone. And then a traditional transi burner because I filled this up last night for the video, put the lid in and everything's cool. So there we go. So here we are again, tents down as you've seen, water's still boiling, so it takes probably about two, three minutes to set that tent down at the most. Obviously I'll have to dry it out when I get home because it was absolutely soaking. But anyway, water's nearly done. So another thing that's come from Base Camp Foods is the posh pork and beans. Now this one's one of the ones that's recommended for D of E. Um, 510 calories in this pack, gluten-free and lactose-free, so I think the only people who can't really eat this one is vegetarians. Oh, and vegans. Yeah, me and Nigel had a taste test on the pulled pork and rice we had last night, and we thought it was brilliant. This one's slightly different. You need to take these little dry sachets out because you don't be fancy chunk chewing on one of them. It's like them what blue things you used to get in bags of crisps. So there's looks like the slices of potato chunks of pork doesn't smell as good as the one we had last night which was this one the real term map. that was really good so as I say base camp food sent us some to try out so let's have a go with this one let's just have a look at the water a minute or two more one open this pouch and remove the oxygen sachet done that pinch the pouch at level four to more ah so level four so it's got all these different numbers here up the side 
So this one is, you're shoving 300 mils and pour up to the correct level. So if you don't know how much water's in there, now that's that's got little marks up the side, so I do know how much it is. You fill it up to where the number four is. So it couldn't really get that much easier than that. But this one needs to stay in here for 15 minutes rather than the eight minutes. But one thing, I'm, one thing I did learn last night is before you seal it up, give it a good stir to make sure you've got the water and all of the powder because there were a few little what I'd call grit bombs where it's like crunchy pieces of rice that hadn't actually absorbed any water because they hadn't been stirred in thoroughly. My fault, not the pack's fault. Anyway, one more check of this water. Good to go. So there's the four. lid off where's that number it's about there All right then. there's more okay so that's full to where the four is This time I am going to make sure it's got a good old stir. Give it a good old stir. Check my watch. Well, moment of truth. It's been about 15 minutes. <laughs> Tell a lie, it's been about 20 minutes because we've been trying to put Nigel's tent up. The wind's picked really, picked up really high. Anyway, <sighs> so it looks a little bit like an Irish stew. Don't know if you can see in there. Um, we'll give it a taste. It looks like they got potato flakes. Give it another stir. So whereas the last one was all like one consistency, this has got a, a, a change in consistency. So you've got like potato flakes and then beans and like bits of mince. Anyway, here goes. Okay, from the get-go, this one's a little bit too sweet for my taste, and it's not as, it, you can actually tell it's a dehydrated meal, it's, you can taste the powder, and to, to me, it tastes a little bit chemically, so this is one that I won't be getting again. Um, Nigel hasn't heard me say any of that, so I'm going to take it across and give Nigel a taste. So, uh, yeah, this one isn't for me, definitely not. But that, the orange one, that was really good. But this one, probably a 2 out of 10. The other one, a good 10 out of 10. Anyway, wash some of the flavour away with this. Oh, well, you haven't seen me cook anything for about a fortnight. Last thing I did was the king prawn Thai curry with noodles. But, yeah, if you've got any suggestions what you want me to cook... Put it in the comments and I'll see which one gets the most kind of people interested in it. Then I'll put it out to a vote on the community tab and then I'll get that done for you somewhere. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to go and give Nigel a taste of this and I'll bring him in to tell you, let him tell you exactly what he thinks of it and see if it matches up with what I say. Well, we've come to the end of another camp. And uh, so the orange packet that we both thought was really good. So we'd probably give that a good 10 out of 10 for like dehydrated food that was good but the yellow pork and beans this morning nil points what do you reckon 
no quoi. <laughs> no, no good at all. Anyway, we've almost finished packing up. So yeah, if you've enjoyed this video, make a comment and tell me what you want me to cook next time because I'm going to get back to the cooking. But I'll uh, put a link to some other video in relation to the alcohol burners and stuff like that so you can see that. But anyway, you'll probably see a subscription thing. If you haven't already subscribed, think about subscribing and give it a big thumbs up. And we'll see you soon. Ta-ra!